Uh, we're going to be talking about Google apps and applications for the next uh, 45 minutes or so. So let me start with a bit of an introduction. Uh, Google has become an integral part of our computing lives. Um, it's initially been built to provide a powerful search engine to collect information from all over the internet. And it's grown to provide many apps and services in such areas as communications, navigation, entertainment, and information management. Uh, Google Apps were initially for use by our stationary desktop world. But more recently, its apps and services have been made available to our mobile on-the-go world. So Google has become a big part of our worlds, both at home and on the go. And I guess this is a good opportunity for a disclaimer. I am not, or never was, uh, an employee of Google, and I'm not a uh, shareholder of Google. So I say most of this uh, because I enjoy using most of these apps, uh, and they've been very useful to me over the many, after the last many years. So here we go. So Google is a multifaceted company. It started out in search. And of course, it's got quite a presence right now in cloud computing. Uh, some of these things will be familiar to you. The Google Drive, Google Docs, Earth.Google, and Gmail, of course. Uh, Google is also involved in the browsers. The Chrome browser has been around for quite a while. And Google has uh, launched into uh, hardware through uh, the Chromebook, uh, Chromecast, and Google, Google Home which is uh, similar to Alexa, if any of you have that uh, at home. So Google, the company, the company began uh, really in the 1998, started as a research project. It was developed, it was developed to develop a search engine. Uh, it was currently, was valued at about, uh, here I say 82.5 billion. That may have changed last week. Um, so we'll have to see as time goes by. And uh, another interesting thing with the company in 2015, Alphabet, which is a company, uh, was incorporated to be a holding company for Google and all of its other segments. Uh, some of the other segments are uh, Waymo, which is involved with uh, autonomous vehicles, and Nest, uh, home automation. And there's another company I'm not familiar with, but it's called Calico. Um, so they, uh, they have quite a presence. So uh, Google, uh, the browser, the browser for Google is uh, Chrome. Probably uh, two thirds of the people using uh, a browser are using Chrome right now. It's been around since uh, 2008. It was originally for Windows, but now it's available for many operating systems. And it's got quite a uh, share of the browser activity whether it's 62% or 65 or 58, probably doesn't really matter. That varies as time goes by because uh, browsers come up with new features and those features eventually find their way into all the other browsers. But Chrome has had quite a, uh, a, a, quite, quite a history. Also, Google is the number. Google is, uh, is 10 to the 100th power or one followed by 100 zeros. I don't think I've written that down ever, but <laughs> you might try it someday. Uh, Google is also the verb. Google was first added to the dictionary in 2006. And now, uh, you know, you hear it quite often, Google this or Google that, or whenever you're looking for something, uh, Googling it usually gives you a good start. So uh, Google is available. Google's uh, apps and uh, uh, services are available at home and on the go. As I said initially, at home, that's all we had initially. But uh, now most people, I think, uh, are more comfortable with their tablets and smartphones than they are uh, with their at-home stuff. So you'll find that the, uh, what you can do with these is much the same, but slightly different. Uh, mobile apps just don't have the complete feature set. And they also, the big difference is they don't have the screen size. So you don't have that much real estate to put up things that uh, they might, the, uh, the, the application developer might want to do. 
And when you do get to the mobile apps, you'll find you have to look around uh, to find out where the controls are. But after you use them once or twice, they become uh, uh, quite uh, easy to use. So Google's products, I was amazed to see this, uh, over 140 different products, uh, apps, and services. I have um, circled ones that I'm familiar with uh, and some that I use, some that I'd like to use, but a lot of these are familiar to you. Uh, calendar and contacts, uh, is really calendar contacts and Gmail are the focus of uh, my use of Google. Uh, the Google Drive is a very useful uh, cloud s storage uh, device. Uh, and Android Messages is something for texting. Um, this Gboard is a different keyboard that you can use on your Google Android app. Um, I haven't tried it, but it seems like there are a good number of features uh, available. Um, Going down this second group of uh, apps, uh, Google Home is uh, something to uh, works with home automation. Um, Google Maps, of course, is is for navigation. Google Keep is something that you uh, have to store uh, notes and texts and any pieces of information that you would want to store in a note taker. Uh, this is an online note taker. And Google Duo up in the top there is uh, kind of nice in that uh, it allows uh, Android devices to effectively do uh, video chats with iOS devices or, or Apple devices. Before Duo, um, people who had iOS devices could uh, use FaceTime and they could video chat quite nicely. Uh, with the Android device, you had to use something that was only Android, or maybe you could get uh, away with using Skype. But now with Google Duo, which is available both for Android and iOS, uh, you can uh, video chat with a, a, an iPhone uh, as easy as you can with another Android phone. So that I think that's one of the biggest uh, improvements in the last six months. Uh, let's see, on the third list here, we have uh, YouTube, which is obviously, hope, I guess, assume everybody is quite familiar with YouTube, although we'll talk a little bit about it later. And then Search and Waze. Waze is for uh, traffic. Uh, uh, it's crowdsourced traffic, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. And uh, Translate, uh, something we won't talk about, but Translate gives you the ability to translate uh, text between a um, hundred and some odd different uh, languages. It's quite impressive and quite useful. So uh, this is an interesting history uh, and the future of Google. I can't really um, uh, uh, say much about the above the timeline there, that blue timeline. Anything before that looks like it's happened. Anything above is strictly conjecture. But Google is a company that is certainly on the go, whether or not, uh, well, we probably will get a Google car, whether we'll get a Google president or not, that's uh, up to the future. So we'll look at these uh, Google products here. Uh, search, email, and calendar are really uh, the focal point of, of my use of Google. And then YouTube and uh, Google Drive, Google Maps, uh, Google Docs, Photos, and Ways, and I, I uh, put this up specifically to show you the icons for those apps. The icons uh, are necessary when you get into the mobile world. Uh, a lot of times you need the icon more than you do the name, so it pays to uh, become familiar with uh, all of the icons for the particular products and services. So when you're at home, you can find all of your Google apps if you go to www.google.com and you'll see the standard Google front page. Uh, Google has always had a very, very plain front page, although recently it, I see a little pizzazz has been added. But it's basically a place for you to type in a question. 
or type in what you want Google to do for you. And that's the uh, search engine. Uh, if you want to use the other uh, facilities, why you, when you're at home on your laptop, you go to the, oh, the All Apps button, which is that button up at the top, um, which uh, is, is uh, this is nine dots. This uh, indicates that there are multiple apps behind that. And you'll see that's also, uh, that icon is used in the uh, mobile apps. But that's your entry to all of the Google apps that you have available to you when you're at home. When you're on the go, you may find that all your Google apps are in a particular folder. Uh, it, it, some manufacturers of phones and tablets put them into a folder for you, or you can go about doing that yourself. If they're not in a folder, uh, you can certainly get them by clicking on the All Apps button. You know, this again, this is the All Apps button on this particular phone. And uh, then you'll see all the apps in alphabetical order, and you can go and pick the ones you want to use. Uh, you can put them in a folder or not. You just put them up on your screen, on one of your home screens, and use them uh, as you see fit. Uh, I like the idea of keeping them all together because it kind of organizes uh, your use of the, uh, the home screen's um, limited space. Um, I try to do that with other things also to try to, to create folders for things that uh, you have in common. And with the newer operating system, 7, 6, and 5, uh, creating folders is a fairly easy thing to do in Android. So search is the big thing. Search, the search engine is available in 123 different languages. There are an enormous number of users. Uh, Again, 65% of the market share is quite sizable and impressive. And uh, it searches and prioritizes websites. And that's, that's all it does, uh, at least for the search uh, option. So uh, the uses of, uh, of Google here uh, up in the corner, I, don't, I can't really vouch for those uses, but it uh, seems about right. So when you do type in a question, uh, like I've got here Snapchat, uh, typed in, uh, you would get uh, a result, and uh, and that and the result is not information on Snapchat, but a load of uh, a, a number of prioritized sites where you can go and find the information on Snapchat. So this is what you would see if you did it at home, and you'd see a, the uh, sequence of uh, of of um, of, of, of addresses. So uh, the search results that you'll see both at home and on the go are uh, ordered, and they're ordered by Google. So um, I don't know too much about the details, but from a Google Help forum, they say there are three key processes in delivering their search results. And uh, this may be just a little technical, but uh, we'll do it quickly. Uh, they, they call it crawling, which, uh, which indicates, which is the answer, the question really, does Google know about your site and can Google find it? Uh, indexing, the question really is, can Google index your site so that they can get to it easily and get to the information easily? And then serving, does the site uh, have good and useful content? Is it relevant? And so then another uh, from, from the Google Help Forum, uh, what is relevant, at least what is relevancy to Google? Because remember, Google is making this determination. So they say relevancy is determined by over 200 factors, one of which is, which is page rank for a given page. Page rank is the measure of the importance of a page based on the incoming links from other pages. So in simple terms, each link on a page on your site from another site adds to your site's page rank. So I only mention this to indicate that these things can be manipulated. And people who know how these things work in detail can write their pages and set them up so that they can surface or bubble to the top of this uh, listing. So uh, the, 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 the ordering is, is maybe not as uh, 
Well, it, it's done by a, a whole lot of, uh, of, of uh, algorithms that Google uh, defines and Google c controls. But more often than not, they do seem to give you, give you a pretty good indication of what's going on. So here's a list uh, that you'd see at home. And here's the equivalent that you would see for Snapchat uh, on your, on your uh, mobile device. And in both cases, you'll find that they're very similar, if, if not exact, as far as the ordering goes. But um, most of us rarely do get down to the second page, because they do do such a good job of ordering things. I don't think I've had to go to the second page more than one or two times in the last year or so. So they, so even with all that uh, words about how they do it, uh, they do seem to do a pretty pretty good job. So Gmail, Gmail has been around for a good long time. It's a free email service. Uh, it's advertiser supported, so that's how they get paid. Uh, mobile apps are available for Android and iOS. You get uh, 15 gigabytes of free storage space for your email. Uh, I doubt if anybody's run up against that limitation. And uh, you can send emails up to uh, with, with attachments up to uh, 25 megabytes. Uh, you can receive emails with, uh, they say, 50 megabytes. Um, lots of users. It's a, a very, very uh, well-used and recommended uh, service. So when you do look at Gmail on your uh, home computer, this is uh, what, what you would see. Uh, you have uh, Gmail controls up on the left, and you also have insight into the contacts, so both Gmail and contacts can be accessed through this one uh, general Gmail uh, uh, portal. And of course, what you see are the emails that you've had with the date and whether or not they're attachments. It's a general uh, email uh, uh, presentation, something I'm, I guess we're all familiar with. Uh, the mobile um, presentation is a little different. Again, you don't have the space. And you have to look around for controls. Uh, you don't have easy menus. Uh, and what people are using, well, that the writers are using now, is this hamburger menu that indicates there are further things behind that. And you'll find uh, the, the hamburger menu will uh, usually give you a menu of options. You'll also find three vertical dots which again indicates that there are some more things that you can do if you uh, click on this. So clicking on some of the icons usually provides the controls for the, uh, the, the mobile device. Uh, this, some of you may be, may, may, this may be obvious to some, but not to others. This is a pencil, and basically it means you want to compose a new email. And the search icon, I guess, is very, very common, has been common for quite a while. So most people are, are aware that that's uh, the icon you want to click on to search for something. Uh, when you get into Gmail contacts, so for, G for the contacts for your Gmail, you have to use a contacts app as opposed to the Gmail app. And uh, this is one, the, uh, up in the top right-hand corner, is the uh, what the app looks like, the icon for the app. Uh, this one I like for one reason. You can get a uh, presentation of all your contacts, or you can click on favorites and then get the starred favorites that you've created. So if you're looking for a number of, that you use quite often and you've started, it'll show up in the top. So it's very convenient, not all of the uh, uh, the contacts apps will do this. Uh, some of the contacts apps will have other capabilities. There's one that I've used that uh, gives you the ability to assign different ringtones to different people. This particular one doesn't. But uh, all that you know, all apps are not created equal, and you kind of have to try them out to see which ones you like best. And it uh, seems like um, we can never get off some mailing lists. You can just go so far. 
So Calendar, Calendar is an, uh, one of those really good basic apps uh, and, and applications on the home computer. Uh, this is a time management and scheduling uh, uh, service. Uh, mobile apps are available for both Android and iOS. And you can create and edit events with starts and stop times uh, on a calendar. And the neat thing about this is you can then take your calendar with you in on your phone. You just use the calendar app on your phone, and you've always got an indication of what's going on with you and the rest of your family if you combine your calendars. You can put your events uh, on there, and then you can look at them by day, by week, by month, and you can combine multiple calendars. And they even have a few special calendars for holidays. Uh, I've included one for birthdays. So I've got three calendars. This is what uh, the calendar would look like at home. Uh, up, uh, uh, Well, it's basically, this is a, a month's presentation. You can see up on the top, you can choose day, week, month, or whatever, uh, how you want to look at it. The, the uh, more you want to see, the smaller the information per event is going to be. Uh, when you get down to by day, you can see quite a bit of information for each event. Bill, could you adjust your mic just a little bit? You're popping a lot. Get, okay, I'll, how's this? Okay. No, you're um, still popping. Is it? Don't put it right in front of your mouth. Maybe a little bit away. Yeah. How's that? We'll okay. give it a try. Okay. So uh, the calendars that you put on, uh, th that you combine, are in the lower left-hand side here. And uh, I've got three calendars here. I've got my calendar, my wife's calendar, and a third calendar that I have birthdays and anniversaries and days that I just don't want to forget. So I have all of those being presented to me at home or on the go through the calendar app. And this is what it looks like on the calendar app. Uh, on your phone, again, it's a smaller screen, so everything is quite compressed. But you can look at it uh, at, on a month uh, presentation or uh, on a week and, and on a day. But uh, when you get down to a week, you can pretty well find what's going on. This indicator over here is what it is, that where you are in the in the uh, week at the time. So I took this screen capture at 4:30 on Sunday the fifth. Okay. Okay. So. Um, uh, uh, oh, the, the reason I wanted to say the uh, calendar was convenient because if you have your both your whole family calendar, then you always can answer the question when you're in an office or somebody asks you to make an appointment. A particular time, you can pull out your calendar and then uh, find out if what you're doing, your spouse, your kids, whatever, that, uh, whoever that you've put on uh, those calendars and then combine. All that information is available to you uh, in real time, all the time. So YouTube, um, most of us are familiar. It's a video sharing website. Uh, you can upload, you can uh, download and watch video clips, TV shows, uh, music videos, short films, trailers, whatever you can, whatever video you can put up there. Uh, registered users can upload something. <coughs> unregistered users can only watch them. Uh, I'm an unregistered user, but uh, my son is a, a registered user. When he found out, I had a uh, video of a magic show when I was 10 years old. He took that video and uploaded it, and now it's up there for my uh, future embarrassments. Uh, YouTube, you'll see when you, uh, you know, when you're looking for something, uh, you'll see this on your desktop. I was looking for information about CVT, trans tra CVT transmissions. Uh, for automobiles, and I got this kind of uh, presentation at home, and when I went on the mobile, I got just about the same thing, and when I clicked on it, I got to the same video, of course. You, you would ex of course, you'd expect that. So you can get a lot of useful information, and you can get a lot of uh, 
uh, of entertainment information. Uh, here's a piece of uh, information that you won't see too often. Pretty uh, exciting kind of stuff uh, that you can get on uh, YouTube. So uh, next we'll go on to uh, Google Drive. Google Drive uh, is a cloud storage service. They uh, offer 15 gigabytes of free storage. Um, it's, uh, you can synchronize this. You can put all of your, your information up there. Uh, it's, it's very convenient. They've got over a million users and the apps are available for Android uh, and iOS, so everybody can take advantage of uh, Google Drive. When you do uh, look at Google Drive on your home computer, uh, this is kind of what you'll see. Basically, you'll see the folders that you've put up, and then you'll see files that you've selected in a particular folder. And you have all of the controls and, and the ability to work with the files and folders up on the Google Drive like you have uh, using File Explorer on your home computer. So you'll be able to create folders uh, and then move files into folders, move files between folders, create folders in folders, and then uh, create a whole hierarchical arrangement of folders. Um, th this is uh, much like OneDrive and uh, Dropbox and Box, those other services that provide inf that provides a space up in the cloud for where you can put uh, all of your information, videos, movies, music. And these are very useful for transferring large files. Uh, as I had mentioned before, with email, there is a limitation on the size of the attachment. So if you want to move a large number of files or a number of very large files, you can upload those files to your Google Drive and then download them to the device or you can send a link to a person and have them download the files that, that, that you've put in a particular folder for them. So you can transfer files, you know, gigabyte files uh, without using email. So here are some of the features, the, the, the things that you have that you can do. You can create new folders. You can upload files and folders. And basically, you can organize uh, on the desktop. And you can organize, uh, well, these are more things you can do on the, on the desktop. Uh, again, more controls for creating and managing your folders and files. You, and in order to share them, you uh, create the link. Uh, you, it's as simple as clicking on copy link. You get that link, goes onto the clipboard, and then you can go into your email and take that link, put it into an email, send it to somebody, and then they'll have access to that folder that you've created. And the mobile uh, application is pretty much the same. You're going to just see the folders and the files that you've selected and have the ability, again, to upload and download things. But in this case, you have to go and use these, uh, these menus and, and, and get familiar with what's behind them and so you know how to go about uh, doing the same things you would do at home on your laptop. And of course, uh, the hitting the plus sign down here is what you use to, deter, to to get into the other some other features. Um, the, this symbol here, this icon, is for sharing a file. That one didn't look very um, intuitive to me. Uh, when you go to send a file, you look for this paper airplane. Again, that looked that one looked intuitive to me, but not very intuitive to a few people that I I've, I've talked to. So. You, Again, it pays to get familiar with a lot of the icons that are used in the mobile area.
and um, I guess there's still some misunderstandings about the cloud, but people are learning as time goes by. Google Maps uh, is a mapping service providing uh, maps, satellite and aerial imagery, uh, street maps, uh, panoramic street views, uh, and giving you the ability to plan a route, basically get directions. Uh, originally, it was uh, a desktop program, and then it was when it was launched in uh, 2005. The mobile app for Android showed up in 2008, and the uh, the Apple showed up a couple of years later. Well, I guess if it's built by Google and it's going on Android first, Apple later, that kind of makes sense, uh, especially since uh, Android has the, the lion's share of users out there. Um, you can get turn-by-turn -turn navigation uh, with, with Google Maps. I'm sure many people have used it at this point. Uh, at home, while you see maps and you can get directions, you're really not going to use navigation at this point uh, because you're at home sitting in your, your desk chair. But when you're out on the go, uh, you will be using the mobile app, and the mobile app will allow you to plan and then navigate. Uh, when you do use the navigation feature, you have to have your GPS turned on. I know a lot of people would like to keep their GPS turned off because it does use a little more battery power. But when you're navigating, you have to use GPS. It's the only uh, method of determining location that gives you the uh, resolution to tell you which lane to be in when you get to an intersection. And you'll find uh, some of these features underneath the menu on the top of this screen. When you do click on menu, you'll see uh, in order to do navigation, you just click start driving. It'll ask you to pick a place. You pick a place, it'll give you a map of how to get to that place. And then if you've got voice turned on and things set up right, you'll get voice directions, turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions to get you to the uh, destination. So Google Docs. Google Docs is really uh, a word, uh, a, a, a um, office suite that uh, Google provides up in the cloud. Uh, there's a word processor spreadsheet, a, a PowerPoint presentation, and uh, you're able to create and edit files online you uh, can collaborate with others. Uh, the files are compatible with Microsoft Office. Uh, the, the file formats are compatible, which makes uh, creating a file and using it a whole lot easier than if it was a proprietary file type. Uh, it is, as you would expect, tightly integrated with Google Drive. And the mobile apps are available, again, for Android and iOS. So Google Docs. Um, just shows you the documents that you've got. So Google Docs is the general term, and then Google Docs is also the term for the, for the, uh, the word processor. So there's Docs sheets for the Excel-like Excel -like spreadsheet and slides for the PowerPoint presentation. And when you do go to Google Docs, you'll see sheets, Docs sheets and slides and you can see what you've got. And then touching or mobile, you'd be touching uh, on your desktop, you'd be clicking on the plus, then you'd get a blank uh, start for whatever you're, you're trying to create, either a spreadsheet, a document, or a presentation. Phil, we're kind of losing your voice right now. OK. Um, so the Google Docs are, uh, uh, you know, you, you just see those when you go to Google Docs. Google Docs to Google Sheets and Google Slides would be available, and you can uh, use any of them on your mobile device. Each one of these is a uh, presentation of that particular uh, app. And uh, we have raised a lot of very precocious young children. That's because Excel has been around for quite a few years. So Photos is a photo storage and sharing service. Uh, it's been around since 2015.
they will allow you unlimited storage for pictures and videos up to a certain resolution. Uh, you can search for things on photos. You can upload as many photos as you can, uh, as you like. That's just unlimited storage. They've got a large number of users. I think it's well over this 200, 200 million now. Um, incredible amounts of storage available out there. And again, Android and iOS can take advantage of this. Um, when, uh, when the uh, users can search for things like people or places or things, so what this really means is you tag the photos, and then um, Google uses some very sophisticated uh, software so that they can come up with uh, these albums of pictures of the results of what you've asked for. So you can say, give me uh, an album of Billy, and, you can, and you'll get all the pictures that Billy shows up in at least where there's a reasonable photo of Billy, side, you know, side shots or just partial pictures, I guess make it very uh, difficult. But um, they're pretty amazing uh, as to what you can get uh, from the algorithms that they've got behind photos. So on your desktop, uh, it's pretty basic. You will see the photos that you've put up and the mobile uh, viewer is just about the same thing. You'll see them organized in a, a way that you've chosen, and some of the ways you can look at them will be behind the menus. Waze is a crowdsourced traffic reporting app. Uh, people can report things like accidents, traffic jams, uh, speed, and police traps. Uh, it's, it was purchased by Google, so it originally was was not it's not a Google original product. Uh, they paid 1.3 billion. I don't know if that's big or not these days. Uh, their mobile uh, the, the apps are available for both Android and, and iOS, and uh, it's pretty useful uh, both at home and on the go. At home, you can get a good idea of what the traffic is on your way to work or before you've left to get to work or to get someplace. You can get driving directions. And uh, when you're uh, going, when you're on the go, you can uh, get uh, information uh, about what's going on on the road. You can get directions, so, and you can navigate uh, using Waze. So most of the times, uh, you'll be looking at uh, these little circles along the roads. And, uh, You'll get an in, it's some information about what's going on at that particular point. If there's nothing going on, which is, of course, the best thing and what you look for, uh, why well, you'll typically get uh, uh, reports about um, Smokies or police at mile marker, whatever. And you get uh, just an idea of what's going on on that road. So it's it, it kind of useful when you're on the road and uh, and, and and as things change, you can uh, get a pretty good idea of what's going on. Um, it's also very nice to have available if you're stuck in a traffic jam. I was stuck in a traffic jam a while ago uh, after we had been on the road an hour. We were stopped. It turned out we were stopped for another hour. And I think uh, just the fact that we were able to use ways to find out what was going on way up ahead of us um, was worth about 10 points on my blood pressure. So it's, uh, it, it can serve many purposes.